Hi doctors, I have two cases here, um, very similar setups with um, initial deep bite and crowding, um, a low number of aligners, and setting up the case where it looks like we have a pretty good arch form, but do we need all of these attachments? And then why do they come on so late? And is this going to be predictable? Uh, looking at a, a similar case, more of a deep bite, still more lower crowding than upper crowding, and having more lower crowding than upper crowding tends to be really tricky. And if we can't find a way to get the teeth to fit in with each other without some IPR, then this would be one to refer. But fortunately, uh, because the patient isn't um, ha isn't very class three and really just has some undersized laterals, this is something that can be addressed. Um, both of these cases have no molars moving, which is a great way to be because we need to hold the molars as our anchor teeth so that all the other movements that we do relative to them are going to be more predictable. Um, then I do a systematic approach of looking at the premolars and although these premolars are rotated and this uh, Invisalign ClinCheck software will do rotation movements to get them to perfect, Clinically, in this case, it doesn't make a lot of sense to do those rotations because they take up less space in the arch. And then we would have an even harder time uh, getting into a better overjet and resolving the deep bite. So instead of, <clears throat> of doing a rotation and even angulation movements on these premolars, I've asked to eliminate those movements and place retention attachments. This retention attachment and this deep bite attachment have different features within the smart track material, um, but they're equally fine to keep because they do provide an undercut surface so that the aligner can kind of clip into here. And then when the aligner is very well engaged with the teeth, then every other movement that we're trying to do, like the upper incisor intrusion, is going to happen more predictably. Um, also, if we are doing more rotations of the premolars, uh, then those are other movements that are trying to happen in the posterior when really um, the patient is just looking for a better solution for the, the deep bite that's causing traumatic occlusion, chipping and wearing the teeth, and just getting uh, closing this upper diastema. Now, in order to get upper incisor intrusion, we really need to have retention attachments adjacent to the two large rooted teeth here that are intruding. And that would be the optimized lateral support attachments. Alternatives would be to put rectangular attachments on the laterals. Those uh, visually stick out more for the patients and I don't find that they are significantly more effective. These tend to work very, very well. I also like the inclusion of bite ramps. Bite ramps are protrusions in the aligners that show up as teal on the ClinCheck. Um, they are there to do two main features here. Number one is to help with what the aligner is trying to do as far as upper and lower anterior intrusion. It doesn't cause, the bite ramps do not cause intrusion, but they allow the, own, the patient's own bite force to put an external force to help where the aligner's trying to go. Because intrusion is a movement that isn't complicated, but it is one where the uh, teeth are moving into bone and there is some resistance. Also, without bite ramps, it's a very high chance that the molars will passively intrude away from each other just from wearing um, tooth to tooth with the aligner plastic on such a wide occlusal table. So if the bite ramps are here, the posterior is going to be disoccluded and we are far less likely to see a posterior open bite for that reason. Also, because the intrusion isn't a movement that happens 100%, uh, we want to finish a deep bite case with some interocclusal space uh, so that if the teeth don't intrude this far and they only intrude this far, we're not going to finish with an anterior interference or get in the way of this diastema closing, and which would be a different form of posterior open bite. Whenever starting with a spacing case, adding a C-chain aligner, which is an overcorrection aligner to the end of the case can be helpful. It isn't always needed, but it is meant to help close the spaces. And so you would need to floss through these contacts at the end of the active aligners um, and see if there are still open contacts and then provide the upper uh, overcorrection aligner 
if IPR is done properly on the lower arch, no overcorrection would be needed, um, but I add a passive aligner here so that you can give the patient a lower tray to wear while the upper tray is working and not staying in the same tray for, uh, for several more weeks. So these are the comments that I made to go from that initial co uh, clin check with some unpredictability to one with a lot of predictability. Going back to this other deep bite case, um, but it has upper and lower crowding, I made a lot of the same comments uh, where I look back and I think these premolars don't really need to rotate. We could rotate this premolar um, if we need to reduce the overjet and take less space in the arch. But considering that this patient has had so much traumatic occlusion um, and getting these anterior teeth rotated and establishing some better overjet, that is a much bigger objective than rotating the premolar. As adults, we wanna treat them realistically um, rather than with this patient was 10 years old, then we wouldn't think really twice about doing, um, about doing rotation there. What I wanted to bring up was the Bolton analysis because I'm seeing, do we have proportionately sized teeth upper and lower? What could we do? Do we need to do this lower IPR? Um, and, uh, or, could we, or could we eliminate it as a whole? You can see that there um, is a larger black triangle here at the finish than initially planned in. There are less extrusion attachments because the software is trying to level the incisal edges um, and leveling the incisal edges causes extrusion of the teeth. But when the teeth have already been chipped and worn and are probably more deserving of restorations, doing those extrusions is not helpful. Um, so this is where I, how I ask for eliminating the extrusions. And then if I'm gonna be doing even just the slight bit of intrusion of the central incisors, um, then I still want to ask for these same optimized support or sometimes they're called um, optimized retention attachments. Um, the other movements that I eliminated to increase predictability is the crown root angulation, which is planned into this canine. It's not as obvious when you play the case backwards and forwards, because I really just see extrusion more than anything. But if there's any, um, any bit of this angulation movement planned, then you'll see this root control attachment triggered. It's the correct attachment for that movement. However, um, that is not a goal of the case. And so eliminating that, uh, that movement is, uh, is much more helpful to focus on what we really need. But that same angulation gets planned quite a bit on the lower incisors as well. I don't see it in a, in a large dimension here, um, but eliminating that can sometimes bring up larger black triangles. And that's where one of the final uh, changes that I will make is to redistribute where this IPR is being planned um, by just increasing it between the centrals. And then we don't need to do as big of IPR on the adjacent teeth. If I can, do more expansion of the premolars and do a little bit more tipping, which I like to do with the 3D controls, then sometimes that can reduce our IPR numbers to practically no IPR for the case. So the type of movement that I'm mostly focusing on is crown tipping, which is the easiest movement for the aligners to do generally puts the teeth in a more upright position, helps the overjet. And my goal with this is to see if these type of movements can help keep the amount of overjet that we're looking for without doing as many sites of IPR. Again, with any traumatic occlusion, I want to finish with interocclusal space so that we don't fall short of the goal. And this looks like just about the perfect, most predictable clin check to approve. Still bite ramps here to prevent the molars from passively intruding, and then retention attachments throughout the posterior. If one is good, two is better. And then making sure that we have rotation attachments, 
on any and all canines that need to rotate. And then tip on canine rotation. So much more predictable when there isn't any uh, crown and root angulation planned in. So I hope this was helpful. And then after doing some of these changes with the 3D controls, you can click live update. And then this will turn into our final clean check ready to approve.